All right, folks, it's fast action, back in action here. In this video, we are going to go through the area of a triangle. And you'll notice that I've got a lot of different pictures here for a triangle. Triangles tend to be one of the more complicated shapes, actually, for students to do because there are so many variations of what that triangle might look like and how you might find the base and the height. So we're going to go through several examples here. Let's just do a quick refresher up here at the top and fill in our area formula that we're all pretty familiar with is one half base times height. Now eventually we will add in another area formula here for the equilateral triangle, but I'm going to skip that part for right now because it's not something that you need to know quite yet. So we're just going to go through our different types. So let's say I've got this triangle right here. We can see that it's a nice acute triangle and I've already drawn in this height. So if we wanted to find the area of this triangle, what we would need to know is we would need to know that height and we would need to know this base right here. When we're thinking base times height, we're always looking for two things that are going to be perpendicular to each other. Now we certainly know this base. We could add those together, but what we don't know is we don't know this height. So we can get to that height by looking at this little right triangle that I've got right here. You can see that I've given you this side of the triangle already. So we could do a quick Pythagorean theorem. Our 13 squared equals got our 5 squared. I'm going to call this an H for our height and our height squared. And of course, that's a Pythagorean triple that we're already familiar with. And if we did that, that would get us a nice height of 12. Okay, so we're going, we can go ahead and we can fill in this 12 right there for the height. Now, now that I have that, I could actually go on and I could find the area and I could say one half and my base, I'm gonna add this entire side together here and that's gonna give me a 14 and my 12 for my height. And if I type that in my calculator, that's gonna give me a nice 84 units squared. Now, what I want us to also consider is what if we wanted to find the perimeter of this triangle? We certainly know two of our sides, but we would need to know this third side. What I want us to recognize is that we could do Pythagorean theorem again, and we've seen a problem like this before, but we could do our Pythagorean theorem again, this time using our legs of our 12 and our nine, and we'll then say our 12 squared plus our nine squared is gonna equal, I'm gonna call it x squared for our last side. If we go ahead and we do that Pythagorean theorem, that's gonna give us a last side of 15 units, and we could fill in our 15 and we would be able to get the perimeter of this triangle adding them all up is 42 units. Now, don't get in your head that the area and the perimeter, that the relationship between these is always gonna be half. That's just a coincidence on this particular problem. Just know that you would actually have to find your way um, all the way through the triangle <clears throat> to get all the pieces. All right, let's move next door here to our nice right triangle. If we want to find the area of this triangle, again, we're looking for perpendicular sides. So we're looking for the legs here. Well, we don't have one of our legs, so we're gonna have to do our Pythagorean theorem again. Okay, we're pretty familiar with our Pythagorean theorem at this point. So we're going to say our 15 squared and our five squared, I'll call it X equals our X squared. If we work that one out, we're going to get x is the square root of 200. And of course, we know that we wouldn't leave that as a square root of 200. We would simplify that and make it 10 radical 2. So I can fill that in here as a 10 radical 2. So my area is going to be 1 half. One side is 5. The other side is 10 radical 2 for my base and my height, which is going to give me an area of 25 radical 2 centimeters squared on this particular problem. Now, if we want to find our perimeter, we're just going to add all these up. And what I want you to really recognize is that this 10 radical 2 is not going to be considered a like term with my other two sides. So my perimeter for this triangle is going to be 20, the 15 and the 5, and the 10 radical 2. And those will just have to be left just like that. They cannot be combined in any way. Okay, let's move on down here to our obtuse triangle. And I know the space is a little scrunchy here, but there's a lot of really important algebra on these problems. If we look at this obtuse triangle, obtuse triangles tend to be tricky for students. Certainly I could have a height that would be inside the triangle right here, um, moving from that obtuse angle. But oftentimes in this obtuse triangle, we're gonna have this height or this altitude that's outside the triangle. So when I would go to do the area of the triangle, 
if, for example, I was looking at this piece right here is my base, the height that's associated with that is going to be over here. I'm going to scooch this over a bit. Okay. My height that's going to be associated with that is going to be right here. So to find the area of this triangle, I'm going to use this 6, and I need to know this value right here. Now to get to that, we can look at this triangle that's been drawn in here. Remember, these parts right here are not part of the obtuse triangle. But I do have a nice little 45, 45, 90 triangle here. So if this side right here is 10, thinking back to our special right triangles, we could take that 10 and we can divide it by a radical 2. And if we rationalize that, we're going to get 5 radical 2. So this little piece right here is 5 radical 2, and so is the height now of my triangle. So the area of this triangle is going to be 1 half, and I'm only going to use the 6. I'm not going to use this 5 radical 2 out here because only the 6 is the side of the triangle. Then I'm going to use my height there of 5 radical 2, and that is going to get me an area of 15 <clears throat> radical 2. We'll label that unit squared. And of course, we could do our perimeter for this one as well, adding the 10, the 15, and the 6. And if we add all of those up, we'll get a nice perimeter of 31 units. Okay, last one that we're going to do. Oh, no, nope, I've got two more. We're going to do this isosceles triangle right here. If we've got an isosceles triangle, of course, this other leg right here is 20. So our perimeter for this one is going to be super, super easy. We just add those up. We're going to have our 20 plus our 20 plus our 10, and it's going to give us a nice 50. Super quick on that one. Then if we want to find the area, again, we've got to find some perpendicular things. So we're going to take this whole side here, and we're going to take this height right here, here and we don't know that height, so we're going to have to find it. We know that in the isosceles triangle, this base is going to get bisected, so those are each five. I can do a Pythagorean theorem again, a 20 squared, a 5 squared, I'm going to call it an h, so my h squared, that's going to get me an h, and that's going to be the square root of 375, it's going to be my 400 minus my 25. I'm going to simplify that radical, and that's going to give me a 5 square root of 15. So my area for this, or for this triangle, my area is going to be 1 half, I'm going to scoot this back over, sorry, is going to be 1 half my base of 10 and my height of 5 radical 15. So the area for my triangle is going to be 25 square root of 15 centimeters squared. Okay. So really, really important on those isosceles triangles, how to get that height there. Um, I didn't write it in my picture, but we can. We can fill in this height of 5 radical 15 right there. Okay, last one that we're going to do. We've actually seen this problem before. We're going to do the area of an equilateral triangle. This time I'm telling you that the height of this equilateral triangle here is going to be a 10 radical 2. I'm going to fill in this base because I'm going to need it. So if we fill this in, we've got our height, and we'll say this is 5 radical 2. We need to know the base. What we need to remember is that this is 60 degrees. So I've been given the long side in this little 30, 60, 90 triangle. This piece right here will be the short. So I'm going to take my 5 radical 2. I'm dividing by a radical 3, just going back to my um, special right triangles there. Oh, I didn't mean to say 5 radical 2. I meant to say it's a 10 there. Sorry about that. 10 radical 2. There we go, my 10 radical 2 divided by my radical 3. Sorry, glad I caught myself there. <clears throat> that I'm gonna, <coughs> I'm gonna rationalize. And that's gonna give me a side of the triangle of 10 radical 6 over 3. That's gonna be this little piece right here. I would need to double that side, okay, because this is only gonna be the small piece. So the whole side of the triangle is actually going to be 20 radical 6 over 3. So when I do my area, I'm going to do 1 half. That whole side is 20 radical 6 over 3. The height of the triangle is 10 radical 2. I'm going to write that as a nice over 1. And then if I work through this, I can see that this 2 is going to cancel here and take me back to my 10. 
my three isn't gonna cancel with anything, so I'm gonna multiply straight across, and that's going to give me a uh, 100 square root of 12 all over three, and then I have to be really careful because that square root of 12 is gonna simplify more, and when that square root of 12 simplifies, a two is gonna pop out, and my final answer is going to be 200 radical three over three. So that's going to be my area. Now that's pretty tricky and I definitely wrote this one to be as tricky as they can be. Um, I should make one last note that the perimeter, we could write the perimeter for this triangle. Our perimeter would simply be this side length right here. Remember this 20 radical six was this whole side. If I take this entire thing times three, that denominator cancels and my perimeter is going to be 20 radical six. Now, if any of this was confusing, I want you to jot down some notes and we can certainly answer these those questions in class. Um, but knowing how to do these triangles is really, really important. And then we're gonna actually add onto this in class.